All right, so kind of from the top here, we've got a new Create React app. We're just gonna clear out some of the stuff. Um, delete this. Delete that. Um, delete that. Delete that also. Go in here. Don't import that stuff. And delete this, save that, delete the index CSS, and you can delete everything that's inside app.css and save that for now. Delete that, and delete all of what's inside there. Cool. And uh, in here, down in our terminal, we're going to install Node SAS, and that's going to let us use SAS instead of regular CSS, which is going to be convenient. And in here, we'll say, just to give it some default styles, we'll say we'll give it a background of. some kind of darker blue. And a color of white. And a font family of sans serif. Just leave it simple. And we'll say npm start. So now we'll say put an H1 of sliders. And we'll also go in here after saving and we'll change this to sliders so it says it up there. And then let's go ahead and close that. Cool. So this is our uh, sort of starting place. And the way that we're going to want to do things with web audio and React is we want to have all of our web audio set up, all of our let ACTX equal new audio context, all of this stuff, we want it to run one time because we only want to create one audio context. So this logic we want to have inside of a sort of big parent component that is going to run that logic one time. And then we will have inside that parent component some child components that are going to be used to control different aspects of the web audio context and also update our React state to display uh, what our current values are. So the thing here is web audio logic runs in a parent component that happen, that runs it one time and then uh, also creates functions for updating it. And then we're gonna pass those down to uh, child components that will run and re-render and run their code multiple times. So that's where we would not wanna have this kind of code because then it would create multiple audio contexts and kind of mess up all of our logic. So what we wanna do and the other uh, kind of balancing act here is basically making sure that our uh, React state accurately matches our web audio uh, current state of its values uh, on all of its parameters. And that's going to basically mean we need to uh, initialize our React state with the right values. And then every time we update our uh, or change anything in our web audio, uh, audio context, we're going to need to also update our uh, React state as well. So we're going to set up the exact same pipeline that we had in uh, the previous video with the setting this pipeline up in the console. We're going to create an oscillator and we get our actx.create 
oscillator function from ACTX. We also get from ACTX, we get the uh, destination. And we'll save that to a variable called out for now. An oscillator needs some gain again, so we will make a gain like that. And then we will say oscillator one dot connect gain one and gain one dot connect to out. And then of course we need to say oscillator one dot start to get our oscillator started. And you hear that worked, but if we open our console and if we refresh this page, it's not going to work again. I don't know what the deal is with why it works the first time, but this will not work if you have it just set up like this because it'll give you the, uh, this little error here. The audio context was not allowed to start. It must be resumed or created after a user gesture on the page. So what that means is that we need to start this oscillator with some sort of event from the user. So we could do a button and we'll say start for our button and we'll say on click equals and we'll just put an anonymous function here that does oscillator one dot start. You can say that and now it starts the first time and it starts in subsequent uh, sequent times. So we can go ahead and create a stop button too. And something you'll notice is that if we stop it, we cannot restart it. We're going to get this crazy error. Fail to execute start on audio scheduled source node, which just means what it says after it cannot start that oscillator more than once so each oscillator can only run one time later with tone.js you'll be able to restart the same oscillator because of the way they've set up their uh, oscillator objects with with tone.js but for the regular web audio context uh, we're not going to be able to do that okay so now what we want to do is we want to make some functions for updating the web audio and uh, and our react state and we will also make some control components so we'll say const change oscillator one frequency we'll just abbreviate that to freak and we're getting one argument and we're going to name it e and we'll just say console.log e.target dot value and you should be kind of familiar with that kind of thing if you've been doing React. So we'll save that and we'll go create a file. We'll say components slash oscillator1.js. That'll create a folder and inside there'll be a file and create an input and it's going to be a type of range. We'll go ahead and give it an ID of frequency because that's what we're trying to work with right now. And we're going to import that up here. Oscillator 1 from dot slash components slash oscillator 1. And then we'll put it right down here. Now we can see we have our input. It doesn't do anything yet though, so we're gonna say change frequency equals change oscillator one freak. And then we'll say in here change freak and on change change frequency. So we're getting that prop, hooking it up to our input. Now you'll see when we change it, we're getting values between 
0 and 100. We'll actually give this a different maximum because a frequency of 0 to 100 is going to be really hard to hear because that ranges from sub bass that's too low to hear to uh, bass that's like just barely high enough for the human ear to hear. So we'll change this to 5,000 for now. And then now you'll see we get between 0 and 5,000. Great. So now in here, in our function, instead of console logging e.target.value, let's destructure value off of e.target. So we're just pulling it off of e.target, saving it to the same variable name there. And we can say oscillator one dot frequency dot value equals value. And that is quite loud. Cool. So that's working to change the frequency. However, you'll notice that it's initializing at right in the middle. And when we first start moving it, the sound jumps because the middle is not where the sound would be in between 0 and 5,000. It's starting at 400, so it's probably somewhere down around here. So we need to make sure that we are initializing this at the correct value. What we'll want to do is we'll want to pass a frequency value to this. And let's, for right now, we'll just say oscillator one dot frequency dot value. And then in here, we'll grab the freak and we'll set it to the value of freak. So now, now it is showing us that that's starting out at around 440. And the problem now though, is that even though you'll see it still works for changing the the pitch of our oscillator, it's not changing where our range input seems to be located visually. So what's happening is that this value, it's kind of like not working the way that a React state value works where it's updatable and continues to cause our, our components to re-render as it updates. So what we're going to do is we will say oscillator one freak and we will go save that as a use state value. So we'll need to import use state hook from React and we will say up at the top of our app const oscillator one frequency and set oscillator one frequency equals use state and we'll use that value we were using before that's our initial value and then every time that we change the web audio we want to also be changing our react state so we'll pass value to the set oscillator one function. And now we're not only starting in the right place, but we can move it around and have a continuously accurate representation of where our web audio oscillator currently is.